Welcome to part two of my Wigwag engine build series. In the last video, we started with the engine base and fitted it to the column. Today, we will continue with the column, drilling and reaming the holes for the bronze bearings and shaping the column on the mill. We need to start marking out all the dimensions from the drawing onto the column. Our first mark is 10mm from the base, where the shoulder of the chassis tapers from. And then scribe all the positions for the bearing holes and the outer shape of the column. The port face details on drawing 7 need to be positioned on a 12mm radius from the pivot point, so this is scribed with the help of dividers. These positions can now be carefully punched into the block and then inspected for accuracy. Two holes need to be drilled for the input and exhaust ports and these are blind 2.5mm holes to a depth of 7mm. A 2.5mm drill was fitted to the chuck and the depth was set on the drill press. The holes were then drilled to the set depth. The other two punch marks for the bearings were also drilled to give a start hole for the follow-up drills. These were then drilled out to 9.9 .9 and 11.8 respectively to suit the reaming operations. The pivot bearing was reamed at a slow speed using a 10mm reamer and cutting oil. My 12mm reamer is a taper shank fit, so the chuck was removed and the reamer fitted to the drill spindle. Again, using cutting oil, the reamer was gently plunged through the hole. The next job is to cut away the excess aluminium from the column to form the shoulders, and then mill the piece to the drawing specifications. A 5mm drill was used to chain drill multiple holes positioned just outside the scribe lines. This can now be taken to the bench vise where a hacksaw is used to remove the scrap. Alternatively, a bandsaw could be used to make the cuts, as hacksawing can be very hard work. I'm knackered. The flat edge left on the column can now be used to square the work in the mill and begin to remove the stock down to the scribe line.
and finishing with cross cuts just shy of the upper shoulder intersect position. The workpiece was then set on an angle using a parallel as a guide and gently adjusted with the mallet so that the scribe line was perpendicular to the mill. The excess metal could now be removed to form the sloping shoulder, again taking care not to overshoot the upper shoulder position. Now if you're watching this and thinking, I don't have a milling machine, so how can I do that? Well, don't despair. I built all my early engines without a mill. Firstly, using my simple milling pallet fitted to the lathe, and then I bought a vertical milling slide, also used on the lathe. In fact, I built this entire engine using these methods. Now, if push comes to shove, there is always the old-fashioned way of removing metal using a set of files. After all, many beautiful model engines were built back in the early 19th and 20th century using nothing but hand tools. So, as they say, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Meow. The work was double checked to ensure the dimensions were accurate before being removed from the vise and deburred prior to remounting. The parallel was used again to square up on the milled side of the column and then milled as before. Any material remaining at the shoulder intersection was then removed with a file. The column still needs holes drilling for the input and exhaust pipes but we'll do that at a later stage. Now the dimensions are not super critical and this is about 0.2 of a millimetre over size here but considering that it was just eyeballed to the scribe line I'm more than happy with that. So please join me in the next video of the engine build where we'll be looking at how to make the wigwag cylinder block. And as always, thanks for watching.